We will now go back up here and empty out this list because now we want the user to make their own input. Okay, so let's go down here, escape key to quit the animation, and then we'll say regular text input. So if we are not pressing the escape key, that is we are typing. So here we'll say else if the length of the input is less than five, otherwise you can't input anything else because you, you can't input a 10 letter word, right? It's only five and not game over. This is also important. Once the game is over, you don't have another guess and not game over. Well, then we'll say input is equal to input plus event dot. And now we have to get the key from the keyboard and we can do that using Unicode and then we'll make this uppercase. And just to be sure, let's print the input because now we won't see anything on the screen. So and now watch down here in the console, I'll now just type U. And there we go, it's just typed U. And now I'm just gonna go with, you know, I'll just type Wordle, U word. But now Wordle, I can type as much as I want. Nothing's happening because the input is already long enough and it, it is now time to input that user input into Wordle and make it an actual guess which is what we'll now code using the, the return key. Um, we'll do this up here. We'll say return key to submit a guess. If the length of the input is equal to five, this is important. The user could be accidentally pressing the return key even though he or she has only inputted a four letter word. And then we don't want this to be an actual guess because obviously it's not gonna be correct. So on, this will only work if the input is actually off length five. Oh, and then comes our important constraint here and the input must be in the guessing dictionary. So you cannot just guess all the vowels as I first guess, no, you have to guess actual English words. Well, if that is the case, we'll say guesses.append the user input. We'll then say that the input is reset to just an empty string. And now, well, let's only do that for now. Let's see whether that works. And actually, yeah, game over, this is important. Game over is equal to true if the input, so this has to be done before we are resetting the input, if the input is equal to the answer, else, well, else false, the game is not yet over. So let's run this and type in a word. I'm just gonna say true and hit enter. And nothing's happening because true is only a four letter word. Okay, this, okay, yeah, this is stupid. Why did I pick true? This doesn't make any sense. Let's, let's exit out of this, go again and try apple. And there we go. So apple is all in there, it's all green. This is not because apple was the correct word, but because we set everything to green up here. So let's make this gray and go for mango. And there we go, mango. Okay, we don't have to have this print statement down here. Let's get rid of that. But I think this is this is working now. And yeah, every time we are making an input, we have to update the unguessed letters, but they're not even drawn to the screen. So let's take care of that first. Okay, so I'll go up here before we are drawing the guesses. And here I'll say draw unguessed on guest letters. How do we do that? Well, we'll say we have to again render our font. So I'll say letters is equal to font underscore small. Then render. You've seen this before. And now we are rendering everything that is an unguessed. Here comes again our boolean false. And then we have to choose a color. We'll just make this gray. And then we'll take our little surface and blit trick from down here and we use that up here take care of the proper indentation so y plus square size half this is incorrect here we'll just use width half we want this to be centered straight in the middle of the screen at you know top margin half this is why we have this top margin so we can control how far in they are let's run this and we get another error what is the problem here? Name letter is not defined. This has to be letters. Not letters. Yep. This is what you get from 
you know, copy pasting. Anyway, up here, you can now see that we have our letters that we have not guessed yet, which at first is the entire alphabet. So that makes sense. Let's see how this top margin thing works. So right now, this is 100. Let's make this 150, run this again. And now you can see how the boxes have shifted down a little. Let's go for 400. Now they are really far down. And you can always see how this, um, you know, unguessed letters string kind of moves along with that. So let's set this back to well, just 10. And then it's kind of like too far up the screen. So let's set this back to 100 just to have it nicely up in the center of the screen here. Okay, right now, this is only one long string of the alphabet. And if I go for Apple again, and type Apple, it's not updating. So it's not removing the A or the P or the L because, well, we haven't coded that, which is what we'll do now. And we can do that by creating ourselves a little function. And well, we'll do that before we're creating the screen. And I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call this determine unguessed letters. Kind of a long function name, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. So we'll take the guesses that the user has already made. And then we'll say guest letters. So remember, this is a list of words. Now we'll just concat, we'll just throw that into one long string. So we'll type guesses dot, no, not guesses dot join, but nothing, <laughs> an empty string dot join all of the guesses. And then we'll say print guest letters. So let's see whether that works. And we can do that by well, inserting this anywhere in our animation loop. We'll say determine guessed, unguessed letters from guesses. So now I'll just type Apple. And there we go. It says Apple because we already guessed that. Nice. The next step is to say what are the unguessed letters then? Um, let's indent this. Un guest letters. I'm using lowercase letters now because I'm within the scope, within the realm of that function here. I'm going to set that to an empty string. And now we'll loop through every letter in the alphabet. And while we are doing that, if a letter is not in, if letter, if this letter that we're currently looking at is not in the guest letters, then it has to go into the unguessed letters. So unguessed letters is equal to unguessed letters plus this particular letter. And in the very end, we are returning return unguessed letters. Yeah, so let's see whether that works. So we are going down here to where the user is hitting the return key. So we are appending the input to the guesses. And after that, we can update the unguessed letters. So we'll now use the global variable and then call our function and insert the guesses here. I get an error. What's the problem? Not in. Yeah. Okay, let's run this. Type apple, hit return. And you just noticed how this got a little shorter. So I'm not just going to type berry. You see how B and E and R again, and this is getting shorter and shorter. So let's type in juice, and then comes pears, and then we might go for the mango again. And you can really see how this is getting shorter and shorter. So yeah, I think you, you get the point. The user can now see what he or she has not guessed yet. Everything else is already down here. But one thing that's a little annoying right now is it's only showing a word once I've actually typed it. I want this to be on the go as I'm typing, right? So I want to see what I'm typing because right now I'm, I'm typing, I'm typing, but it's not showing only after I return it then says Apple. So let's go into drawing the guesses. So it's letters, words that have already been guessed. So down here, we'll now also include the user text input, which is which is kind of like the next guess, okay? So if I, here we said less than the length of guesses. So now we'll say if I is exactly equal to the length of the guesses and J is less than the length of the input, why do we have to do that? Well, we are looping 
through all of the boxes, but some of the boxes might not be filled or might not be to be filled yet. So say I've only typed in three letters so far, then I can only fill the first three boxes. And this is what I'm checking here if J is less than the length of in the input. Okay, so here we'll now say letter is equal to, so this time I'm just gonna copy this from up here again. Is there anything else that I have to consider? Um, I don't think so. I think this, this should be just fine. So let's run this and start typing. Uh, I get an error, of course. Yeah, <laughs> there's always something. If, if you copy paste, you always run into problems. This has to be the input, not the guess. So input J, lower, up. Oh, I actually hit caps lock. So let's go for the mango. Up, oh, this is not working again. A, uppercase and yeah, this has to be an uppercase okay so no it's not working yet so let's try to debug this and print the letter and also print a little hello statement i'm not gonna hit a so it, it is actually doing something here so it's creating this letter here also say print input. Yeah, so this, this works. So why can't I see it on the screen? Yes, another copy paste error. I'm, I'm just uh, 255. This is just perfectly white. So let's make this gray and let's run this again. Start typing and there we go. Apple, mango, fruit. It is working. Nice. One thing though is um, we, might want, we might want to add an option for the user to hit backspace and you know correct any any spelling mistakes. So this is this shouldn't be too hard. We can do this down here. Return key to submit a guess. Backspace to correct. Uh, well, user input really. Uh, user input. So if event dot key is equal to pygame dot k underscore backspace so in that case we'll just say if the length of the input is greater than zero this is important otherwise you know we're we would be trying to subtract from zero so if the not subtract from zero but subtract letters from a string that doesn't have any letters so if the length of input is greater than zero well in that case we'll say the input string is equal to input until length of input minus one. Let's see whether that works. I'm going to type apple and now I'm just going to go back with the backspace, backspace key and yeah, this um, works just as the way it should. Just the way it should. So the next thing will be to actually take care of coloring. Right now everything is gray. So let's code ourselves another function up here, which we will, which we will call determine colors or simply determine color because we are only determining one color at a time. Anyway, we must add our guess and we'll add the letter of the guess that we are currently checking because we are looping through all of the boxes i and j and now the question is how in within guess i we are coloring box j. This is why we have this j in here. So we'll say the letter that we are looking at is the jth letter of our guess. And if this letter is equal to the jth letter in the answer, so if that is the case, then the function should return green. And if the letter is in the answer, so if it's not at the exact position, otherwise it, it, it would have returned green. So if we are anywhere else, then it's gonna be yellow. And if neither of this has returned anything, we'll just return gray. Notice that right now this is not taking care of um, the user typing particular word that contains a correct letter. But let's say you type um, multiple letters, well, uh, well, you're always typing multiple letters, but you're typing the same letter multiple times in a word. So let's say you, you're typing the word lolly, 
but the correct answer is jello. And in that case, some of the else should be marked as yellow, and not, but not all of them. And this is important. Jello contains two else, but Lolly, your guess, contains three. So we want at least two of these else to be at least yellow. I mean, they could also be green because they're at the correct position, but right now this would not work. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to override. Where is that? The answer. So I'm just going to make this answer is equal to jello. Okay. So I'm not going to run this and type. Okay. Right now, let's just say hello. And we can already see this is not working because we're not making use of our new function. Where is that down here? Color is gray. So here we'll now say determine color of our guess. So we will say guesses i, the i'th guess, and then the chth letter of that guess. Let's run. Let's run this. There we go. I'm going to type hello, and there we go. The correct answer is jello. Hello is what we typed, so this part of the word is already entirely correct. But let's see what happens if we type lolly. We get an error. This is not something that I would have wanted to see, obviously. Return yellow. Yep, I miss. I typed this in lowercase letters. Let's go again. Type lolly. Hit enter. And here's the problem. The computer is now saying, well, L is, this is not correct. This is supposed to be a J. But I can check whether L is, in general, contained in the word jello. So the computer is seeing it's not green because, well, we are not in this part of the if else statement here, but we are in the else if, and now it's marking that as yellow. So the user right now would think, oh my, this um, word we are looking for contains three L's actually. So lolly was actually a pretty good guess where, you know, it's really just the O and the LL that should be colored. So what can we do here? Obviously, we need to adjust our color function here. And what we'll do is we'll go into the part where it's not green, where it's, where it's potentially yellow or not yellow. And what we'll do is we'll count the number of occurrences that or we count how often the letter that we are currently working with appears in the answer. So answer.count letter. Then we will count how often that letter was already in the correct position up here. So we are, we will count how many of these letters how many of the jello else are already marked as green? This is what we're doing here. So we'll say n correct is equal to zero. And then we'll have what I'll call the, I'm going to call it occurrence. Okay, n occurrence, and we'll set that to zero. So that is the occurrences that we have already been highlighting already. So what's important is that if two of the L's have already been marked green, we cannot have another third L be marked as yellow or green. Well, it's just about yellow now, but uh, well, because yellow only contains two L's. But if there's sort of an L left over, that could potentially be yellow, but it cannot be all the L's in the word. So if we were just to guess all L's, which is not possible because of the second dictionary, but let's say it was, then we only want the first couple of L's, the first two to be highlighted as yellow. And this is why we have to have these three, um, these three, these three integer values here. Okay, so for i in range five, we are now looping through our word. If guess i is equal to the letter, we'll then say if i is less or equal to j. In that case, we must update the occurrence count. So the occurrence will now be added or increased by one. And if the letter is equal to the, or is in the correct position as well, answer, answer J, there we go. In that case, we must increase the correct count by one. And now comes all the magic. After we've done all that, all of that on, well, counting really, we'll say if n target minus n correct so we are, we'll say the word we're looking for contains two L's, jello. We are subtracting from that all of the L's that are already in the correct position and have been highlighted in green up here already. And from that, we are then subtracting the number of times that we have already marked any other L in yellow. And if the, anything is left after that, 
So if this is greater or equal to zero, only then are we to return yellow. Okay, I know this was a lot, but I'll, um, I'll walk you through an example. And to demonstrate this, I will now go back down here into the return key part, and we'll get rid of, these dec of this um, guessing dictionary for now. So we are giving ourselves the opportunity to type in, you know, just repeated else, for example. So let's just make, make this a comment. And now let's run this. Um, get an error. This is, ah, key. I'm just forgetting letters here. So if i is less than j, so let's run this. So the correct answer is jello. Let's see what happens if I type all else and hit enter. Now the computer is marking these two green and these two yellow, and this is something that should not have happened. So I coded an error. Let's, let's try to find this. So the problem is this little i here. Well, it was a J, it was supposed to be an I. Let's run this again. And now let's see what happens if we use all else. And here we can see it's only highlighting these two in green and all of the others, despite being contained in the word yellow, despite them being else, they are not highlighted in yellow because we already marked two of the else in green. So let's try something else. Let's go for L, E, L, E, E. And now, we can see it's highlighting this E and L. And then it says, well, I still have some L's left, so I can highlight this in yellow. And let's see what happens if we went for something like this. And now you can see this one gets, gets to be yellow because there's still an L left, but this one, well, there's nothing left here. So what's left after we run the subtraction here, well, it's not greater than zero or equal to that. And that's why the last L was not highlighted anymore. Okay, so let's go down here where we excluded our guessing dictionary and reinsert that. So typing five times L, I can't input this anymore. I have to actually guess proper words. I'm guessing lolly here. I'm seeing, oh, wow, I got the two L's correct. And this, oh, what else could it be? Well, is it, is it maybe jello? And it is. Okay. Let's start a new game and say we were typing apple mango and then fruits and oops, juice and pears and grape and then the game is now over i can't type but it's kind of frustrating because i don't know what the correct answer is i know it's jello but let's say we did not know that i mean we have to display the solution to that game otherwise the, the user gets frustrated right so let's take care of that and we'll use this bottom margin down here that we introduced to um, you know, type, type type out the correct answer that the user was not able to guess. So after we have drawn the guesses, I think this is where we can insert this part here. So here we'll say game over and show, well, show the correct answer after a game over. So if length of guesses, is equal to six. So the user has exhausted all of their guesses. And the final guess, so guesses five, is not equal to the answer. In that case, we would like the final answer, the correct answer to be shown. So we'll first set game over equal to true because the user has now exhausted all of their guesses. And then I'm, not, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna copy paste this again, I know. There will be issues with that but I love copy pasting anyway. So now we'll say letters is equal to not the input J, but the answer. And we'll mark that in gray. And then we'll say letters down here and down there as well. Got to use the plural here. And where are we going to draw that? We'll just draw that in the center. So with half, and now we'll say height minus the bottom margin and then we divide that by two so this is pretty much the same as what we did up here where we had the unguessed letters top margin divided by two now it's the bottom margin divided by two and then we subtract the margin in between the rows of the guesses as well because technically there is one more margin down here after the last 
um, row because it's always drawing the block, the, the, the square and then the margin. So we are subtracting that because there's one down here that we don't need. Anyway, let's type apple, mango, grape, juice, fruits, and pears. And there we go. It's now displaying the word jello because this is what the correct answer is. And I think this is really all we need to play Wordle. So let's go up here and eliminate this part here where we override the answer. Okay, there might be one more thing though, and that is restarting the game. We don't always want to restart the, the Pi game session here every time that we have finished a game. So let's go down here and use the space bar to restart the game. So we'll do this after we code the return key. So space bar to restart. And we'll say else if the event.key is equal to pygame.k space. And don't need this indent here. We'll say game over is equal to false. The game is no longer over. The answer is equal to a well random choice choice of our answer dictionary. And we'll say that guesses is reset to an empty list unguessed letters that's again the entire alphabet and the input is once more an empty string so that should be everything that we need so yeah let's give this a go gotta go with apple and pears and mango and let's say i was frustrated with the way that this was going let's hit space and we can start with a new word i'm gonna say um well apple pears and you can see how pears on the previous game gave us at least i think it was some yellow and now it's nothing let's go with mango and oh now this would be a very hard game to continue on playing so i'm gonna go with crane so l and i uh there's like almost nothing here um hmm uh, I, I, there's not really any point in playing this okay anyway i can just hit space and restart with another game except i can't type what's the problem hey okay there's still some bugs in here what could that be pretty simple right it doesn't say game over so once more apple berry and now this is actually pretty promising two r's we know of two r's and l and and b anyway i'm gonna hit space and let's see whether we can play once more and now we can now the game is really working everything is working as it should and we have implemented and successfully recreated wordle in pygame thank you very much for watching